Hey folks, how you guys doing? Hope you're all having a great day today. I got a list of stuff to talk about after a very eventful weekend. Uh, this is Mon what is th today's Monday, I think it's the 11th, the day after Mother's Day, that's right. Yesterday was Mother's Day, if you're a mama, happy birthday, happy birthday, happy Mother's Day to you. <laughs> uh, I'm scatterbrained this morning. Um, let's see, so a few things to talk about <laughs> on this list. Uh, the biggest thing that's from this weekend, my website was crashed basically all day yesterday. So as far as, it seems like once every, I don't know, six months to a year, probably closer to a year, once a year since creating my website, I've had a disaster day to where it keeps crashing and uh, just all kinds of chaos. And the reason is I use WordPress, which is great. I like WordPress, it makes things very user friendly but it's continuously updating and you, you gotta have maintenance here and maintenance there and all this stuff and ay ay ay. So I'm responsible for the way my website looks and how the content is organized and published on my website. And I do very little of the server side stuff. Don't really know much about website servers and honestly it's not that interesting to me so I don't really pursue learning more about it. And seems like, like, like I said, once a year, everything goes to poo. And uh, <laughs> it just makes for a frustrating day. So yesterday, Mother's Day, I was bouncing back and forth between, you know, doing a little bit of family time, trying to get my website live, doing a little bit of family time, trying to, you know, get my website live. Eventually, I was able to, what happened was, it was uh, so many people flooded the website after I released that picnic table video, which really wasn't the, I guess it was kind of a tutorial with the SketchUp stuff, but free plans for it, very basic diagrams, not like a full-blown set of plans, uh, but basic diagrams to make a really good picnic table. And <laughs> so there's several ways for me to deliver free digital files. Uh, the easiest way is to, you know, put it in a zip file and post it on my website and have a link that they can click on and instantly get it, although, uh, I wanted to stop doing that and start going through the whole checkout process on my website because um, it's a better indication of who would possibly build the plan because uh, it, for just for statistical tracking purposes, if I just put a link up there, then you're going to be more inclined to click on it even if you don't want to even if you don't want to build it. You just want to see what's in it, right? So by putting it into the whole checkout process for all of my other stuff, uh, it's still completely free. But in order for you to, to get it, you have to go through the checkout process, which means it's, it's kind of eliminating some of the people who probably won't ever build it. And I can get a more accurate number of the people who probably will build it. So I can get more accurate statistics on how popular that project is, I guess. So that was the first one that I put through. Uh, the first one that I put on my, the free side. Golly, I can't speak this morning. That was the first one first free digital file that blew up like that. That's what I'm trying to say. And uh, it's still blowing up. I'm look, I was looking at my email inbox this morning and um, this, this morning when I woke up, it was over 600 people got it. And then I looked at my email inbox, watched, look at the timestamp. And it's like, you can see every single minute in time on that timestamp once or twice listed. So one or two per minute is getting it, which is like, it's crazy. Um, but that's cool. So, so that amount of traffic on the website typically wouldn't do anything, but when they're going through the whole checkout process, it uses a little bit more server resources from my understanding. And then also, here's another mistake. Um, I sent out my email newsletter at the same time. So my strategy for that is typically to send out my email newsletter a few hours before I want to make it the video live on my website, a few hours, a few days, I'm sorry, video live on YouTube. Uh, that way I don't have this influx of traffic while it's starting to send out emails. And also it gives a little bit more incentive to the people who are on my email newsletter list because you get it first. And sometimes I'll do that days in advance. For example, the CNC part four and five that I just released, those were live on my website. Tuesday or Wednesday of this week, something like that. They've been live for several days. And then Saturday, I released the email for those to my email subscribers. And then it wasn't until Sunday that I made them live on YouTube. 
Uh, so <laughs> it was a crazy day, all of this stuff coming in at once. And then uh, the problem with all of that was I kept getting the error, everybody kept getting the error of error establishing a database connection. Uh, so I finally, after several, several minutes, hour almost, I was able to get into the back end of the website and put it in maintenance mode. And then after that, it blocks all incoming traffic, so people from the uh, YouTube or whatever, from getting into the website so that I, the, the resource load will go down and I can make some changes. And uh, it was just, just technology, man. Technology is a fantastic thing until it's not working properly. <laughs> and then it's just so frustrating. Uh, but that was the that was the case with yesterday. So, oh, during all that, my my email sender got stuck, and it uses Amazon AWS to actually send the emails. But I think there's something to do with a WordPress cron that activates that. I don't know the whole. I don't know the details about all this stuff. So it still uses some some server resources to send the emails, but the emails are actually sent from Amazon AWS. Uh, so it got stuck. And I had to, there was no way to pause it, so I had to just delete it. So everybody who got the picnic table email, none of those links work anymore. It's just, I just hate technology yesterday. I woke up this morning and no problems though. So today is a great day. Uh, next thing on my list is ads in the machine video. So YouTube ads, right? They're annoying. Everyone can you know, agree that ads on YouTube are annoying. And back in 2016, I think, I think it was early 2016, YouTube released what at the time was called YouTube Red. It has since then switched to YouTube Premium, which is like $10 a month, and it takes all ads off of YouTube completely. And you also get a uh, free subscription to their Google Play Music service. So it's like a Google's version of Pandora, Spotify, something like that. And back in 2016-ish, when it was initially released, uh, I signed up for it. And since then, I have not had any ads on YouTube at all. I know there's ad blocker and all that stuff, but I'd much rather pay the extra $10 a month and uh, support the creator creators that I enjoy their content, you know? So I'm kind of like distanced myself from the ads. I don't really know what's going on with how many are being displayed and all this stuff. I just have the default settings set for ads on my videos just to earn a little bit of revenue, right? And then I published the video five for the CNC video, which is over an hour long. And I had a couple of people complain about how many ads were on it. And I'm like, I, I don't know. I don't, I don't see them. I got it set to default, whatever. And I go into the settings for the video and it says uh, add automatically add ad breaks during the video. And it's got like a list of timestamps. I didn't count how many it was, just glancing at it, maybe 10 or 15 ad breaks. Whoa, that was ridiculous. So <laughs> I apologize for any of that. Uh, I, I, had I known that, I would have just turned it off from the very beginning. But like I said, I'm, I'm blind to ads because I pay the $10 a month uh, to get rid of them. I think that's just a great way to support creators. Uh, that you enjoy their content, if you can. Um, so going forward, I changed the defaults to not have ads in the videos. And I know that'll decrease re revenue a little bit, but it is kind of annoying. So <laughs> I apologize about that. I was just simply, ign my ignorance on the situation, right? Next up is two kind of project routes that I'm going. Right here on this table, you can see two big walnut slabs. And these are, there's a little gap in the middle, but they're pushed up against one another and they're completely covering my four foot by eight foot assembly table. So these slabs are eventually going to be a table. And I'm working with a friend of mine on this. He has a client job um, and he's hired out a little bit of shop time here in my shop to use the mainly the CNC machine to flatten these monster slabs. So this is uh, these particular pieces are more than what's needed for the table, but he had to have these two specifically because they're book matched. So we're gonna he's gonna cut out. Basically, I think the table is going to be when it's all said and done about 36 at the minimum width, 
and 70, 72 inches in length, something like that. So we're gonna have some extra material of this, this walnut left over that I'm gonna use for something else that I think might be interesting. I don't know, I'll find out. Um, so that's an upcoming project and part of my deal with him is that I'm gonna record it. So it'll be a project video, which is cool. And then for the base, he bought, what did he buy? He bought three, two, two or three metal bases from Rockler, if I'm not mistaken. I think so. Um, after or before, probably after that, uh, workbenches. I'm gonna do a kind of a limited run of workbenches. I want to see if I can't really streamline the process to make a really high quality workbench just like th that work, just like that workbench, that one. Not the hickory one, but this one. This is the better one. Um, it'll be like a, a line of what I'll call French bench, right? That's a French design. That's, it's kind of flattering that a lot of people say that that's the J. Bates workbench, but it's, there's nothing really, I mean, I made a video on it. It's a French design. So it'll be a, a limited run of French benches. And uh, I'll try and sell those, but I think that's gonna be fascinating, or I'm very interested in that process for a couple reasons, uh, to see if I can't get the entire joinery side of everything. Um, of course, we'll have to do the lumber milling and all that stuff with traditional tools, but the complete side of the, the joinery side of all of that done on the CNC machine, I think that's fascinating. And one of the benefits of the CNC machine, you get very, very precise results in a fast way. So something that's built probably a little bit more solid than this one is, right? And then uh, sell a limited run. So each one of the workbenches will have a leg vise, a nice array of dog holes ready to go. Um, what else did I have inside that grouping? Uh, a matching moxin vise to go on top and just a shelf down below, no cabinet or anything. So I think that's gonna be fun, regardless of if they do or do not sell. If they don't sell, then I'll have some really nice gifts <laughs> to give away to some fellow local woodworkers. Uh, because I, I, don't, I don't have a need for five more workbenches. Um, and also, I'm contemplating selling this hickory workbench in the back, keeping the pine one because the pine is just my favorite. There's the, it's personal preference. The hickory one works good too. It's just for a long, prolonged use, hickory just has a lot of vibration. And um, the vibration bounces back. It doesn't really absorb stuff, but it's a nice, solid, solid workbench. So I'm contemplating selling it and then just building some storage cabinets back there because since moving into the shop, I haven't used that workbench as a workbench. I just store stuff on it. So right now it's just a, it's just a fancy open cabinet. <laughs> so I'd much rather see that one be put to actual use than sitting back there collecting, well, not collecting dust, collecting tools. Um, that's that. Uh, walnut slab table, workbenches, uh, Taylor tools. So. I was recently uh, contacted by Mike Taylor from Taylor Tools, and uh, he's another small business owner. I love supporting other small businesses. It's, it's fantastic when you, can, when you can support other people who are taking the risk on themselves to create a business and then potentially create a small number of jobs for other families out there. I think that's, I think that's really cool, uh, rather than support, supporting large corporations. Now, you know, I, I just, you gotta, you gotta be real here, like there's, none of us can completely eliminate supporting super large corporations, but when it comes to uh, where I wanna spend my money, I've always preferred to spend it with the little guy, right? Jeff Bezos has a lot of, a lot of money he's gonna be okay without every one of my dollars. Uh, so Taylor Tools, Mike Taylor, um, is a small-ish, pretty small company that has a pretty good array of hand tools for woodworkers. And one of the coolest things that I found on their website is he's got an entire line or an entire offering of precision measuring and marking tools like squares and uh, dividers and all this stuff that are under his blem lineup, right? So blem, a little blemish. So if it has a, an, a cosmetic blemish, it is no longer good for like Starrett or some of these other companies that sell precision instruments, precision tools. 
to sell it. So rather than just recycling the metal, the precision is already there in the features. Why not just grind off the uh, branding or whatever and then sell it as a blemish, a cosmetic blemish tool that still has the precision at a much lower rate, right? Much lower price. I think that is super smart. I don't know why some other companies haven't done this in the past. And if they have, I just simply haven't found it. So I have a link down below to check that out. Um, it's an interesting, interesting way to get very nice, precise measuring and marking tools at a discounted, a discounted rate. If you don't care about a little cosmetic blemish, right? Um, and the last thing on my website is I crashed my website, which I already talked about. So last thing on my website, last thing on my list. I don't know what I just said. I can't hardly talk anymore, guys. Um, that's it. I always end these videos the same way. A long pause. Um, that's it. I don't have anything else to talk about. You guys take care. Have a great day. And I'll talk to you later. So I'll talk to you later. <laughs>